Okay, I want to welcome all you people tonight to our program meeting in April, springtime, right? Yeah. Uh, we don't have any particular business that we have to conduct, fortunately. So we can just... Uh, She's just driving me crazy. I told you. I haven't got to you yet. <laughs> but Diane has an announcement. <laughs> If you would come up here. Oh, I have to come up Yeah, here. because otherwise nobody can hear you. <laughs> I just wanted to give you a heads up. If you had not seen this on Facebook or heard about it, on Tuesday, April 19th, at five, from 5 to 7, in Frankfurt, Ohio, at the Brick, they will have a presentation of the military banners that you see around in some of the cities, like I think... Um, is it Leesburg and Greenfield and other places have them? Uh, Chillicothe's been considering this, so if anybody's interested, you want to, it's just a come and go as you please. I think they're going to have refreshments, but it's five to seven on the 19th at the uh, at the brick, or they call it the sunroom brick, at uh, Frank in Frankfort, Ohio. And it's uh, it, the people that are actually having their members, their veteran members, on the plat. Pla uh, Banners will come and look at them and inspect them, and then they'll be hanging them sometime soon. So it'll be a, just a nice evening. So check it out if you're interested. No more announcements, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That being the case, then we're going to move forward. And the speaker tonight is Mr. Bill Jones on the history of Twin Township and the Jones family history. And Diane is going to come back. No, she's not. I'm just <laughs> fussing with her now. Okay, Bill, you're on. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Thank you, Diana, for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak to you about Twin Township and a little bit about our family history. I imagine, uh, as I've perused through some of your uh, information on the web, you're all much more uh, expert on this than I am, but I'm hoping that I'm able to share something with you maybe that you're uh, not familiar with, and if I say something that's incorrect, please correct me, but don't come up and Will Smith me, okay? Is your mic, is your, is your mic, is your mic turned on? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not used to this fancy stuff. Apparently not. Sorry. I don't know whether any of you recognize this or not. This is the last stanza of the poem Thanatopsis by William Cullen Bryant. And the reason I put it up there is because uh, when I was in high school, uh, our 11th grade uh, English literature teacher made us memorize this as one of our school projects. And, of course, uh, being the stupid 11th grader I was, I thought I had this thing down pat. So... <laughs> I uh, volunteered to go first to give it in front of the class. I got the first line, <laughs> and then I just completely froze. <laughs> and Josephine Medcalf, you remember her, Peggy? Mm -hmm. Josephine Medcalf was, our, was an excellent English teacher. and She said, Mr. Jones, in the future, you'd be better prepared. So thank goodness for technology, because without aids like this, <laughs> I definitely wouldn't know what I was talking about. But I'm hoping I can share some things with you that maybe you're, you don't know about Twin Township. Uh, this is a picture of me and my older brother. We grew up on uh, the farm on Jones Levy, and um, it was an active farm. And we sold uh, registered bulls, and we sold registered hogs. And my brother pretty much played uh, cowboy a lot. <laughs> This is Dave, my younger brother, and I guess he got it from my dad. This is him when he was three years old, and my grandma always told me that uh, this old horse was used to be one of the workhorses on the farm and was retired, and all it did was stand out in the pasture, and, and she couldn't get him off the horse. He'd go out there and settle all day long. The horse wouldn't move, so she just left him. <laughs> but we're pretty much all farm people, and... Uh, and this is pretty much what uh, Twin Township is. It's uh, farmland. We don't have a whole lot of industry there. But um, it's a great place to grow up, and it's a great place to live. This is Twin Township. It, um, when you look at it, it looks a little bit like South America, doesn't it? But 
that's how it was created. Yeah, it uh, it was formed from parts of Union, Paxton, and Concord Township in 1805. Of course, the legislature designs and makes townships, so uh, that's how they formed Twin Township. Um, we have about 3,000 residents. This hasn't changed much over the last 200 years. Uh, well. You know, when we got up to about 3,000, that's where it stayed. It's been that way for about 100 years now. So uh, we have 42 miles of roads that we maintain, one active cemetery. We have five that we maintain that are inactive. But we do have some burials in there. We actually, we had a, a lady that was buried in one of these inactive cemeteries that was 105 years old. And, we, and she uh, passed away just last year, and we buried her in that old cemetery. It was an old family cemetery. Twin Township operates uh, volunteer and EMS services. I currently serve as the, what they call the fiscal officer, which is really the clerk of the township. It's an elected position, um, and townships have three trustees, of course. Um, and we're separate. We work together, but basically I'm in charge of the finances for the township. Um, my education, my background is in education. I was a... Uh, school teacher at Huntington and a counselor at Western and Pike County and Pickaway Ross and and the alternative school and for the last 19 years I've been the clerk for Twin Township so and I was also on the school school board of Payne Valley for eight years that's an experience you all ought to try sometime. <laughs> if you really want to feel uh, inadequate that, that will do it for you but our township uh, in the northeast corner where we um, where you enter from Slate Mills, uh, Route 50 cuts right down through the middle of our township all the way through, and it pretty much follows um, the path of Paint Creek that cuts through Allen Cliff when it exits up here um, out of the township, but the Paint Creek goes all the way through our township also. And this is a map from the, uh, I think from the engineer's office, and it tries to identify a lot of the old family cemeteries that are located. There's a lot of them, all, all through Ross County, of course, in Twin Township also. The middle section shows about the same thing, and here you see the two roads veering off from Route 50 called Upper Twin Road and Lower Twin Road, and those are old roads in our township. The odd thing about this is Upper Twin Road is actually south of Lower Twin Road. They run parallel, but uh, they both uh, dump into Pain Creek on the north side. There are two ways to cross um, Paint Creek in Twin Township. There's only two accesses, Jones Levy and um, Blaine Highway. And then this is the south end, and this is very hilly down in here. This is uh, uh, the old town of Sparkersville, which I don't think there's anything standing there still now, but um, at one time it was a pretty busy hub. Um, and then Nipshin is at the uh, at the end of the exit there of the township on um, 772. This, of course, you recognize this probably is the uh, is the atlas of 1875. I'm sure most of you have have seen that. And this is a picture of Twin Township. And the reason I put that up there is because, as you know, probably um, Twin Township was a part of was a part of the Virginia Military District, the area that uh, that was set aside for veterans of the Revolutionary War from Virginia, and if, if you look at the, the outline of lands in Twin Township, as this is laid out, and if you look east of the Soda River, it's much different because it's much more square and, and it's in rectangles. This is all kind of different kinds of uh, uh, drawings in here, basically because these were issued not really as deeds, but they called them war warrants back then when he issued these grants. And actually, um, this is one of the, of the grants. It's actually signed by the son of uh, Martin Van Buren. He was a secretary. It's called Martin Van, Van Buren Jr. I actually found it in some of my paperwork, so I've got a copy of this. And what's the name on that? Uh, it, it's deeded to Gilfellan, which is... Um, an old family in the cemetery, Alexander Gilfillan. And he was uh, a Revolutionary War veteran. And 
this was 40 acres. I, I think they were, there were several times early in uh, the township's history where these warrants were created and signed by presidents because there was a lot of um, disagreements about who owned what then. And this pretty much uh, explains it when, the, when you were given the warrant by, signed by the president. This is a picture looking from Lick Hill, which is actually off of Camlin Hill. And if you look at, um, this is Jones Levy Road right here, and this is Sparkersville Road. And then it becomes Camlin Hill when it, when it touches Bomb Hill Road right here. And um, you can see part, pretty much how the main part of the township is laid out. <coughs> Excuse me. This, uh, this is Bourneville in the, in the distance here where you see these buildings. Chillicothe would be back in this area here. And Route 50 is right along here. This, the tree line is, is Paint Creek, and it wanders all the way through the valley down through there. And it's uh, played a big part in, in the township. And I'll explain a little bit more of that in a minute. This is the um, mysterious Spruce Hill. I don't know whether you've heard about this or not, but this is now owned by the Ark of Appalachia, mm -hmm. the conservatory group that uh, is preserving these areas. And this is, uh, there was a book written back in 1950 by Arlington Mallory from, uh, I think he was from the Tell Institute. And he tried to, to claim that Spruce Hill was settled not only by Indians, but Vikings. He claimed there were Vikings that came in here in the year 900 or 1,000. <laughs> and he, he claimed he found uh, evidence that they did iron work there. But um, I don't know whether any truth to it or not, but that, that was his claim in the book. He also claimed that there is a, there was a he found a, an, a design that looked a lot like Serpent Mound down in Adams County yeah. up on this uh, Spruce Hill. Now the Ark of Appalachia will let you uh, visit that area if you contact them. They'll, they'll set up tours of that. But it, it's kind of interesting uh, his description of what happened there. We, all, we have a lot of Indian earthworks in, uh, in the township. This is uh, Squire and Davis back in 1846. A couple of surveyors uh, came through the area and, and identified a lot of these Indian mounds, and they're the ones that found Mound City and, mm -hmm. and did uh, drawings on that. This is uh, what they called, they named it Jones Fort back in those days, and now it's called Bomb Earthworks. And it's located, it's hard to see here, but uh, it's located at the intersection of Jones Levy Road and Bomb Hill Road. It's on private property right now. But with the crops off, if you come down Jones Levy Road and turn left on Bomb Hill Road and look at the field on the left, you can actually see the outline of that square that's there. Uh, this big square right here. And then this little circle, you can see it also. You can see outlines of it. When the, once the crops are on, you can't tell that area, but you can kind of, you can kind of see what it's like. So they're still able to farm that land? They do farm it. Actually, this is, uh, if it's, it's kind of hard to see here, but um, this is part of our family farm right here where this big square is. Mm -hmm. And this is all farmed, all this down through here. Mm -hmm. This runs all the way down to Fresh Hour Lane yeah. or Slagle Lane. This is Slagle Lane right here. And uh, so it's all farmland. Did that originally have a wall around it? Pardon? Did that originally have a wall around it? Yeah, they said that, um, I guess the idea of this is there are openings in that, um, in that square. And you can see the openings like right here and mm -hmm. over here. And they say in the vernal equinox, the sun actually rises over Spruce Hill right through that opening, mm -hmm. right through there. Mm -hmm. So one of the openings would be due north. Apparently, yes. yeah. It would have to be set up, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how they did it, but I, I think there's designs like this 
all over the United States. There's four or five places that have mm -hmm. designs like this. Mm -hmm. This was the, the, the Hopewell culture that lived about yeah. about 1,000 AD to or about 100 AD to 400 AD, I think. Mm -hmm. And they were probably ancestors of the Shawnee and other Indians that lived in the area. These were found and are found all over the bottoms in, uh, in Pink Creek. Uh, this is one of my dad's displays, and I brought a few more for you to see afterwards. Um, all kinds of different airheads that, that are on this location, and from all different periods, too. And Twin Township, like a lot of the these rural areas is composed of a lot of barns. <laughs> we have a lot of old barns there. Yeah. This one has burned burned down back in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. um, a kid was sleeping in there and smoking and caught it on fire and burned it down. But it was a pretty neat barn. It was uh, it was in a, a book called uh, Barns of America by Hal. And when they uh, finished that barn, they actually had a square dance in there. So this this was a barn that was on our property. Mm -hmm. This one is also a barn on our property on Upper, Twi on Upper Twin Road. It's on, actually, Annette is my uh, sister-in-law. It's on her property. Mm -hmm. And the top part of this barn, according to my grandmother, was the old Dunkard Church from Upper mm -hmm. Twin Road. Mm -hmm. She claimed when they quit having church there that her grandfather bought that and moved it down on his farm and turned it into a, the top part of the barn. And it's still standing. This is another old barn that uh, is kind of unique because it has a part of a mill in it. And I, these uh, these holes in this in this wood here have something to do with uh, an old grist mill that was on the farm at one time. And it, it's at the corner of Sparkersville and, and Jones Loving. This is how we used to farm back in uh, the 1950s. No, 1900s. <laughs> it felt like it was back in the 1950s, but uh, my great uncle is pictured here. And, and when I when I told my uncle, which is uh, Vicky's dad, about it, he said that's probably the first time he'd been in that field the whole summer. But uh, that was a hard way to farm back then. We have uh, a lot of wildlife in Twin Township. Uh, a couple of eagles actually are on uh, North Fork Creek right behind my house. This is where they, they nest and they hunt for fish up there. Um, there's several nests in, in Twin Township that have bald eagles there. Um, of course, we have a lot of deer. We caught a couple of twins there on a, on a trail cam last year a couple years ago and in the winter time we see flocks of turkey so they're all over the place too and like I said before there there are two accesses to the south part of uh, Twin Township across Pink Creek and this is one of them this was uh, this was called Shots Covered Bridge this is over Blaine Highway of course it's been torn down long ago um, and the one across Pink Creek of course was a was a um, covered bridge also, and I remember Vicky's dad, um, my uncle, said that he, he was the last school bus to cross over that when it collapsed into the creek. <laughs> he said just as it crossed over that bridge collapsed. Do you remember what year that was? Oh, that was back in maybe 1930 or 1928, somewhere around. I got right a picture there. of it, but I wondered how, how long it was there. He said at that time it was part steel and part uh, yeah. covered. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was part. And we also had at one time a, a very active uh, railroad that ran through Twin Township. This was a DTNI railroad, mm -hmm. Detroit. Toledo and Ironton. Mm -hmm. And I guess the, the line never actually ended up in Ironton. I don't think they ever finished it all the way to Ironton. And then it went to Jackson mm -hmm. and it went close to the to the Ohio River, but I don't know whether it ever went to Ironton or not. But that's where um, Henry Ford ended up buying this railroad in 1920. 
and he used it to transport a lot of the raw material up to Detroit. This is Horseshoe Bend, which is off of Minahan Bend, which is off of Harris Station Road, which is off of Sparkersville Road. <laughs> but if you go up uh, Minahan Bend, uh, you can actually see where that train, uh, the train tracks used to run up through there. Mm. And this is called Horseshoe Bend because a lot of times engineers would take that corner too fast. And yeah. They would derail there all the time. I remember living out there and growing up, you could you could hear the, the trains going in to repair it um, when trains would go off the track there. Paint Creek's played a large part of Twin Township, and this is the reason why. Because before the dam went up, this is what uh, my grandfather looked out one morning from his front porch, and this is what he saw. He looked over at the old house where he grew up, and then he looked at cars trying to get up on the levee road, and that would be kind of dangerous traveling, I think, that way. But uh, And this actually is, uh, shows it as it's going under the, the old bridge crossing Paint Creek on the levee. But it did a lot of damage. Uh, the floods, we had them every year, it seemed like, and it did a lot of damage also to um, the Chillicothe area because Paint Creek would um, would flood down through here. This picture was taken at Grandview, looking down toward um, the southeast, uh, where 772 is. And so this is part of uh, Paint Creek right in here. Mm -hmm. The top one was the car. Would, it, would that have been the 690, or 1963 flood? Or? It looks like it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, my brother used to, um, they, they, of course, it would flood Route 50, and he was probably 13 or 14 years old, and, and uh, uh, truck drivers would pay him 25 cents if he would set up on their hood and and uh, guide him to Bourneville, you know, through that flood, because <laughs> he could tell where the fence posts were, where the road was. <laughs> so he would set up on the hood and ride down there for a <laughs> Yeah, he was a navigator. Uh, Bourneville is the uh, is the home of our Lieutenant Governor Merle Shoemaker. Of course, we uh, we sell all beer at state minimum prices there. <laughs> we used to be a dry township, but they they uh, when Valero came in, they uh, uh, put an issue on the ballot and it passed. And uh, basically, the trustees said, we're not going to fight this. We don't want people who drink uh, buying beer here and, and drinking it all the way to Bourneville. So. <laughs> <laughs> Merle was a great guy. He uh, lived in, in uh, Bourneville his whole life, raised eight children there. Great family. And uh, uh, he's well remembered in Bourneville. And of course, Rodney Gregg was a big part of the Genealogical Society, and he wrote the history of, of Bourneville, and I'm sure you have it here in your archives. And oh, yeah. It's well written, and it's got a lot of information in it. Originally, we've known as Twin Town since 1811. I think about 1835, they changed it to Bourneville. They named it after Alexander Bourne, mm -hmm. who was, a, I think, a cartographer. And there's no evidence that he ever actually visited Bourneville, but they named it after me, and they thought, they thought he was a good fellow. So this is a picture of Rodney at my grandfather's house. Uh, Rodney, of course, would have been a cousin to my grandfather. Uh, we're all related back to John Storms, so that we'll get to in a minute. Bourneville, over the years, has had a lot of different uh, industry. Of course, the, this is the Presbyterian Church, which later became Bell Tower. Mm -hmm. And this is where uh, Bourneville School used to have all of their graduation ceremonies um, back before Twin School was built. And the other church was uh, the Methodist Church at the other end, which is now a dairy hut. It's been torn down. Um, and this is where my brother had a church services there, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. It was a nice big church. And this is one of her famous structures that still exists in Bourneville, the Bourneville Jail. <laughs> and it sets behind the, uh, the firehouse. So you need to go out there and take a look at it if you've never seen it. We still have uh, bars in the window. And the first two occupants of that jail were actually the guys who built it. 
after they after they got done, they celebrated too hard and they threw them in the justice of peace threw them in the jail overnight. And this was uh, the big part of Twin Township and Bourneville. This was Twin School. I think the original part of the, the middle part was built back in 1928, maybe, and uh, the other sections were added on later. But um, one of the important things about the construction of this school was uh, it was responsible for bringing electricity to Bourneville. Uh, my grandfather was on the school board at the time, and he said that's the reason why they ran it out from Chillicothe, was because of the school. Beautiful house on the east end of Bourneville is the Robertson Place. And if you go to the Dairy Hut and look to the east, just across the Upper Twin Road, this is where the Robertson Place is. Beautiful house. We've been there. We've toured it. Yeah. It's, and Lynn Carden, has, uh, she's another one of our famous uh, residents of Twin Township. Lynn uh, has written a book called The Women of Robertson Place. And if you haven't read, this is excellent reading for um, the history, the local history of Twin Township. She has, she's done an excellent job with this. She's a really good writer. So a little bit about my ancestors, and I'm sure we're going to, a lot of you are probably even related to them too. Um, John Storm is uh, Vicki and Dave and I, and, and uh, that would be our three great grandfather. And uh, he was, he moved here in 1802 with his parents. He was 12 years old, so he was, built, he was born in 1790. And they moved here from uh, close to Winchester, Virginia. And uh, he came with his mother and father, who was Peter Storm. And, and uh, this is Peter's will that my grandmother typed out at one time. But the interesting part about this will is, um, Peter Storm had, I think, eight sons and maybe four daughters. But he left his entire farm to um, one of his youngest sons. And that, that's kind of unusual. They usually leave it to the oldest son. But this one actually went to Jacob, who was uh, third from the youngest. Um, I'm not sure. I tried to find out why, but I don't know exactly why he ended up with it and the rest of them didn't. But... Uh, Maybe they were already set by the time Peter passed away. This is John Storm at the corner of um, Walnut Street and um, Second Street on the southwest corner. Mm -hmm. In the uh, this would have been in the 1880s. He was in his 90s, so he lived at Storm Station in Twin Township, which is about 20 miles from here. So he would ride horseback every so often to town to visit his children. Some of them lived here. And uh, this is our second great grandfather here. This is William Asher Jones. And this is actually from one of your newsletters, the genealogical newsletter. And this shows a, a, a story about one of his uh, birthday parties because he was one of the, John Storm was one of the oldest residents in Twin Township at the time. And these are some of the uh, some of the older um, gentlemen that lived in the township. Some of the early settlers there. And John would be right here in the middle. This is one of his grandchildren. And this is William Jones. And this is John's one of John's <coughs> daughters, Jane, who married William. And that's one of their children there with him. Jane. Uh, Jane Storm Jones, she must have been a character because she, this would have been our great-great-grandmother. Yeah. Our great-great-great-grandmother. Okay, I, I can't get the right straight here. <laughs> but um, she was the one who would, who would make out wills and try to, you know, control things beyond her graves. <laughs> <laughs> you know how those are. And this is William A. Jones. And this... Um, um, he moved here from Pike County, and they actually came from, again, close to Winchester, Virginia. That's where his family moved. So he moved in here with his, with his parents. He was born in 1830. And in 
the 1840s, his parents passed away, and they're buried in Pike County. He and his sister and a couple of his brothers moved to Ross County, and he actually went to uh, work for a farmer in in Twin Township by the name of Enos Prather. And I'll tell you a little bit about Enos here in a minute. They are buried in Grandview Cemetery, and one of the uh, William William A. Jones was he was interested in a lot of things. He was a farmer and a stock dealer, and um, he also ran a, a flour mill, and he was a member of the Savings Bank Board of Directors here in, in Chillicothe, and also helped lay out Grandview Cemetery, and they, that's where they're buried in, in Grandview, and this is their monument there. And this is the home where he lived and where Dave and I grew up. It's, it's still standing there. It's called Oakland Farm at the time. It wasn't built by William. It was built by Enos Prather. Or it was started by Enos Prather. Mm -hmm. Enos had two brothers, and they moved into Ross County and Twin Township in the 1840s. Very wealthy men. They came from Virginia also. And they, they owned a lot of farmland in Twin Township. And this is a picture of the, of the house from about 1900. And the reason I put that on there is I wanted to see if you could see what... This is my... This is Jane Jones here later in life. She died in 1914, so... And if you can see, it's sitting on the stump beside her. It's kind of hard to see what it is. That's a monkey. <laughs> and it's in a diaper, but she apparently had a monkey for a pet. <laughs> and this is a picture that was just taken a couple years ago, so the house is still standing. Uh, the house itself is kind of interesting because it's got a lot of uh, unique features. It has 18 rooms, and when it was built, every room had a fireplace in it. And this section in the back is a separate entrance here, and it was for the, the, um, the farm workers who lived actually in the house also. And there are three rooms back there for the farm workers and the maids. And if you go up this back staircase, this is the only room you can get in at the top of the stairs because they sealed off the door going into the other two rooms because the farm workers were visiting the maids too much after hours. So <laughs> they sealed off the the access. Uh, this is a picture of Bourneville Mills, which was um, owned by my our great great grandfather William William A. Jones, and it uh, it burned down in the uh, 1880s, <clears throat> and they think it was set on fire. They think somebody was. They think it was arson that destroyed it. And the where, reason. Where was that? Where was that? I'm sorry. Where was that? Uh, it was, it's actually right across, um, it would be Caddy Corner from the Dairy Hut, and it's right beside where the post office is. It's on the east side of where the post office is. It was a steam mill. It wasn't um, water powered. It was, it was powered by steam. So it was kind of unusual. Do you have any idea who all any of the people are that's in the picture? No, I can't. <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. Yeah, I... Hmm. It would be nice to know who they were. Yeah, uh, this is an old piece of, it almost feels like plastic, but I know it's not plastic, but it's not paper either. But it was a, a it was kind of a, a resolution of a, an award that they gave to William A. Jones and three Prathers, uh, John Prather and John F. Prather and Samuel Prather. John Prather, these other two are his sons, Samuel and, and Frank, John F. But actually they presented a, um, a flag, an American flag, to the Silas Prather uh, GAR organization, this group here, the Grand Army of the Republic. And kind of the interesting thing is this is William A. Jones sitting here. Now, he didn't fight in the Civil War, but he paid someone to take his place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and that was, that was acceptable back then. They allowed, and I think, I think this, this um, post is named after Silas Prather, who died in the Civil War. I think Silas is the one who took his place. And this is John Prather's family. This, and I think John was a brother to Silas. 
if anybody thinks that's not correct, then please correct me. But the lady there is William A.'s sister. This is Jane Jones, who married John Prather. And these are his two sons. I think John was a brother to Silas, and Silas was the one who died in the Civil War and uh, who the Post was named after, the Grand Army Republic Post. That's one of the projects you have to come in and see, yeah. so we'll, we'll look out. <laughs> what I did find out in 1850, William A. Jones was working as a farmhand for Enos Prather, who was John's father and Silas's father. So he was working on the farm for them. In 1860, they, uh, when they took the census in 1860, the people who lived on the property were also included in the census. Mm -hmm. Silas Prather, who was 19 years old in 1860, was working as a fireman for William A. Jones. Mm -hmm. So what happened in 1857, the Prathers, who came in, a very wealthy man and owned a lot of land in Twin Township, there was a, a nationwide panic. Um, something happened to the banks, and they all went out of business, and they lost all their money. And it happened to be a real bad crop year, two years in a row. So they went bankrupt. And uh, that's what happened to the Oakland farm. Enos Prather, who was building it, had to sell it. He sold it to his brother-in-law, whose name was John Barger, and Barger turned it around and sold it for twice what he paid for it to William A. Jones, and that's how we ended up with that property and finished the house. <laughs> now, this would have been one of William A.'s sons. He had, um, he and Jane had six sons and two daughters, and three of their sons died young, and three lived to uh, old age, and this was, this would have been Dave and I's and Vicky's great grandfather. This is Milton Penn Jones, and his wife is Emma Corcoran. So this is this is part of uh, Commissioner Doug Corcoran's ancestors here. So we're all related to the Corcorans. And actually, my grandfather, who's the one in the dress, <laughs> and that's his older brother Albert. But our grandfather's middle name, his first name is is Milton. His middle name was Corcoran. Was named after his mother, and uh, some of you may be familiar with the Corcoran reunion they have every year in August. Big gathering of all the Corcorans here. Who's, who's the little boy? The little boy is is our great is our grandfather. That's that's Melton Corcoran, and uh, Dave and I like to call him our baked grandfather because he was born in February, and it was real cold. And he said his mother put him in the oven to keep him warm. <laughs> so he, he was our baked grandpa. This is this is Melton, and this is our grandfather, Melton Corcoran Jones, and this is Vicky's father, Victor. This is their oldest child here, and our grandmother, who was Ruby Cutright. So we're related to the Cutrights, and we're going to go into that just a little bit here. And this is a five-generation picture of my grandfather's side. So this is Milton with Uncle Victor, Vicky's uh, father. And his mother, Emma Corcoran, is on is here. And this is his uh, grandmother. And uh, she was, uh, let's see, what was her name? Sarah. This is Sarah Downey Corcoran. <coughs> and then... The fifth generation is Amaryllis Tilly Downing. She is a widow of, uh, her, her husband died in the Civil War. And this is a picture over here that's not really, can't see real well. But my grandmother told me that she always wore black because she was mourning the loss of her husband in the Civil War. And she also always had a pipe with her. She hid in the folds of those back dresses. What was the uh, husband's name again that died in the Civil War? Henry, Henry Downing. And he's buried at Antietam. And um, I visited that cemetery once and I thought, I'll never be able to find this. And he was right in the front row. <laughs> I, have so, da I have Downies too. That's yeah, you have Downies uh -huh. This is Henry Downing. He, he was from Jackson County, I think. Okay, um, but I, I've often wondered, you know, 
um, Sarah had two sisters, and they they were um, you know they were raised by a, a single mother, Emma Rollis. I just wonder what it was like back in 1865 to to raise three daughters without a husband. This is Grandma's family farm, and it's on Upper Twin Road. It uh, has since been torn down. When, when we have properties up there that aren't occupied, people vandalize them, and you can't keep people out of them. And so, you know, the safest thing to do is to tear them down usually. But this picture was taken around 1900, and this is uh, our great-grandmother here, who was Clarissa Means. And Clarissa died relatively young. She died at age 42. Um, these three here would be my grandmother's siblings. This would be Lawrence Cutright, and that would that's uh, Margaret Cutright, and this is Esther Cutright, and this this is Campbell Cutright. Those are all siblings of my grandmother. Mm -hmm. So this was before my grandmother was born, and um, Clarissa died when my grandmother was two, so she really never knew her, and uh, she was basically raised by um, Margaret, the oldest girl here. It was kind of her, acted as her mother. And this is what the house looked like as they were tearing it down there, and I think Annette told me that um, these logs have been used to build a, um, a log cabin somewhere in Soda County, maybe? Adams County? Uh, I think it's set up there. That's Cynthia Ann. Where at? Cynthia Ann. So, That's Pike County. So yeah. the Mennonites, Mennonites took the, took oh. the walls. And so when <clears throat> Annette and my brother Bob lived here many years too. And this would have been, this is Margaret Campbell, who was, um, she married Camden Cutright who was the father of James Cutright. It was, this, was, this would be Grandma's grandfather here. And Camden, it's kind of unusual because his father was a member of the state legislature, and apparently right after that happened in 1835, he got uh, fed up with Ohio and took his whole family and moved to uh, Illinois, mm -hmm. except for Camden. Camden wouldn't move. <laughs> so he's the only Cutright who stayed here. Uh, with his wife, Margaret. Uh, Margaret was the son of William Campbell II, and the Cutrights, this John Cutright that's mentioned in your document, one of the documents you have hanging here on the wall somewhere of, as a Chillicothe pioneer, there's mm -hmm. John Cutright would have been uh, Camden's grandfather. And this is the Cutright who was known as John the Bear Hunter because he was... Uh, apparently very, very proficient in bear hunting. Mm -hmm. uh, John's son, who was also named John, was known as John the Deer Hunter, and they said he could kill a deer while he was riding full speed on a horse. Wow. <laughs> this is where Margaret Campbell grew up, and it's on, it was on the property where my brother Dave now lives, and this was their house. It was a two-story log house. They raised 16 children there. Yeah. And it's on Mingo. It was on Mingo Road. And this is a picture of my grandmother on the right, her sisters on the left, and then in the middle is a lady called Georgie Price, who was a descendant of one of Margaret's sisters who moved to Oregon. That's where she lived. Was it Oregon then? I can't remember. I think it was Oregon they moved to. But um, I, I think. Georgie's claim to fame was she was the grandmother of Bill Buckner. Anybody remember what Bill Buckner did? <laughs> Bill Buckner was the first baseman who let the ball go through his legs for the Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> <They're also worlds. laughs> but he, he was a good baseball player. One of Margaret's sisters, uh, this is Elizabeth Campbell Burt, and the reason I got her picture on there is they moved to Nebraska and lived in the log house or sod house. I mean, yeah, yeah that's a that's a sod house there in Nebraska. And on my mother's side, this was my grandfather, and so my mother was a Bethel, and uh, this was his name was Elsie, and he was in World War One, 
His wife was a speakman. Her great-grandfather was a Revolutionary War veteran also, buried in Pike Run Cemetery. And uh, this is a picture of his unit from um, World War I in France. He was on the ammunition train. He said that uh, he had a lot of stories when he was in the, in, in the war. But he said when he started, he was driving a team of horses, and when he left, he was driving a truck. <laughs> so <laughs> technology was caught up with him. They would a lot of times had to march from one area to the other. He said they would march him at night, and they would put their hand on the guy in front of him and go to sleep. <laughs> and marching, he claimed they would do that anyway. And this is a ship that brought him back home after the war. They docked in New York City. I can't imagine 3,700 men on that boat, but that's how many came back. And he said when they docked at uh, New York, they made them all take all their clothes off because they were covered with lice, and they sprayed them down. And he said they didn't give their clothes back. <laughs> he thought he was going to have to walk home naked. <laughs> and they found the issue clothes to him. And this is his three children, which he had when he came back, our uncles. And uh, this is uh, Dave and uh, his mom on the right here. And I, uh, one of the old families that lived in Twin Township, his name of Poole, uh, owned an inn, which this is actually not located in Twin Township, but it's on Upper Twin Road, just past Twin Township on Paint, in Paint Township. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, an inn back in the, in the early 1800s. And that house stood, I think it probably collapsed back in the, back in the 70s sometime. Would the stagecoach have come through there? Yes. That why they yes. Uh, that, that, that's the reason why it was yeah. built like this. <coughs> uh, you know. And this is uh, my dad in the middle. Uncle Victor is on the left there. And my aunt's on the right. Um, and uh, they were all, you know, they all had pretty successful careers. My uncle was uh, second in command here at Mead when he worked at Mead. And he was an engineer, graduated from Ohio State. My dad worked at Pink Creek Dam and was a superintendent up there. And part of the reason he did that is because of all the flooding down through the valley. He was he was there from the time that they stuck the first shovel in the ground um, and then retired in 2001, I think, you know, 2001. And um, my uncle at the time was living in uh, New Mexico. And my aunt was living in Akron, and, and right after he retired, they decided they were going to fly out to see my uncle visiting. Um, so their plane tickets were for September the 12th, 2001. Oh, oh. <laughs> and they actually went to the airport and thought they could get on a plane. <laughs> um, my uncle has uh, probably a thousand pages of of little vignettes that he's written about his life growing up. And this is one of them. It, and it talks about his first day of school in, in Bourneville. And one of his best friends was Philip Caldwell, who was an uncle of Lynn Carden, who wrote the book. And they lived uh, just outside of Bourneville on the east side of town there. And Phil and, and Uncle Victor were close friends all the way through school. And Philip actually ended up being the first non-family member to run Ford Motor Company. Wow. So <laughs> oh that's a pretty good accomplishment. Yeah. But I think the uh, when you look at all of our our uh, aunts and uncles there, probably the, the one who was most accomplished was this lady right here, <laughs> <laughs> who had ten children, raising them all ten by herself, pretty much. And uh, her husband left soon after the 10th one was born, right there. <laughs> and she actually put herself through nursing school. Oh. And uh, all three of them had great sense of humor, too. Great people. They don't make families like that anymore. No. <laughs> strong, strong, strong. Um, I just, to end here, I'm going to end on, a, on a, probably a sad note. But um, as clerk of the township, I'm in charge of the cemetery records. So... Uh, this is a picture of the of the plat map of the old section of Twin Cemetery, and it's hard to see, but I can give you a, a better copy of that for your archives here if you want it. Oh, we've got it. Yeah. And I also have digitized every deed that we have, and they go back to 1892. And if you want, I can give you uh, uh, copies of 
of the digital record of all these dates. Too. And um, this is Merle's headstone, and I, I kind of put it up there because in the background is Spruce Hill. <laughs> so when you look at the cemetery, you can also look at Spruce Hill. This is our website, and there are also a lot of uh, cemetery records on the website here if you're interested in that. I've got um, burials going back to all the time that I've been clerk, so everybody that's buried, been buried in that cemetery from 2004 is listed on the record here. And then I've got the, uh, the deeds on the website that go back to 1980. Um, but again, the, all of the, the original deeds that I have the records of, you can have those if you want them. So that's it. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Yes, I do. Okay, go right. Has anybody ever heard of Cornfield College? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, my mom used to talk about but Where was it located? Well, it was east of Bourneville. And I'm not sure if it was on the south side of the road or the north side of the road because I've got different stories of that. I think... I think it's a, it was across the road where the cemetery is right now. Tell, I think tell it was me about, again, what, was it, what did you call it? It's called okay. Cornfield College. Cornfield College. And what was it? It was, it was the, one of the schools, one of oh, the early schools oh, there early in the school. town. Okay. You say your mother taught there? Uh, no, her mother, I mean my grandmother, went to school there in the 1890s. Mm -hmm. In fact, I've got her grade cards on my uh, cell phone that uh, wow. she was almost a perfect student, and uh, her name was Leona Free, and they lived up uh, uh, Humboldt. Oh, I was going to say, that's a thing. I grew up in Humboldt. I think I knew you. Yeah, you probably did. We're going to have a Yeah. The yeah. yeah. farm was in spring. I yeah, I met you at New Holland at the library. That's that's what mm -hmm. has that building been torn down? The old school is gone. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I would imagine. Oh yeah, a yeah. long time ago. Okay. Yeah. I've got a picture of the school, but it only shows the school and the kids in front of apparently for graduation. Uh -huh. So I can't see any of the background to tell you know where it was located. But I think it was close to right across from where the cemetery is. Uh, yes, there's there's going to be a church in Warrenville again. There is. The Anglican Church is bought. Buying the property and they're going to move into the bell tower. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a, that's a beautiful, beautiful church. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I also want to say, my husband was a barber in Warrenville back in the early 60s, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. We've had saloons there and funeral <laughs> homes, and <laughs> we've had all kinds of industry there in Warrenville over the years. <laughs> I've got, as I told you, I've got ancestors that have been in born, or in twin townships since uh, yeah. uh, 1795, I believe. So it's it's just it always fascinates me. I'm just and I love going over there and just kind of trying to imagine what it was like all these years <laughs> yeah. ago. So, yeah. Well, I hope uh, I hope there was something I was able to offer you that you probably don't know, but uh, yeah. Yeah. things we did not know. Thank you. Tell, uh, tell us, Bill, about a little bit about Johnny Storms and William Henry Harrison. Oh, <laughs> well, he was he was in the War of 1812. He was actually the last surviving member in Twin Township of 1812, of the, of the War of 1812. And when he was uh, when he was in the service, his unit was uh, the bodyguard for William Henry Harrison. Mm -hmm. And he claimed that uh, our that's the family lore is that. Uh, for his hundred, he lived to be 99 years old, and he had contacted Benjamin Harrison, who in 1888 was president. Mm -hmm. And so he said, when he turned 100 in 1890, mm -hmm. he had Benjamin Harrison agree to come to his birthday party. Oh, <laughs> oh, my he didn't live that long. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Rodney Gregg, does anybody remember Sally Flowers? Yeah, yeah. sure. They used to. Chat back and forth when she had her TV show. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. I used to argue with Rodney all the time. <laughs> yeah. They had different opinions about certain things in history. Our oh. grandpa was Fred Schmidt. And when Granny would go to town, uh, Grandpa would sit outside Joan's store and, 
and uh, bus with Ron. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the old uh, general store in Sparkersville when the train went by there, mm -hmm. and I, it was a re it was a, a real general store. I mean, they had the barrel of crackers in there, like. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That was the Humboldt store that for a long time yeah. they had the barrel of crackers. Yeah. I sat on it. <laughs> yeah. Talking about active cemeteries, is Johnson Cemetery? Johnson Cemetery is in Huntington Township. Yeah, well, that goes into Huntington. Yeah. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I've been there. And I yeah. But is it an active cemetery? Or? I know there are people have been buried there in the last 20 years. Oh, but, uh, okay. Yeah, but I, I think it's pretty much an inactive cemetery now. Um, so I didn't know if it went into Huntington or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That um, pool house you showed there a little bit mm -hmm. ago, uh, that's a relative of the Freeside family and my family. And uh, I've got an old newspaper write up about that from years ago, oh, whether it came out of the Chill Copy newspaper or the Columbus Dispatch, but uh, telling about the history of yeah. the building. That it's an old, it was an old, old structure, uh, the early 1800s. My great grandfather was still here. He could sure tell you some history <laughs> too. Oh boy! I always heard stories about the pool house uh, that had the fireplace was so big that they have the horse go in and carry the hog. Yeah. I remember that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.